What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today we did see high volume selling across the indices. So the question is, are we about to see a full blown stock market correction? First up, let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. Also, just a quick reminder, you can still claim the Black Friday discount code for Bank Trade Alerts where you can get 67% off your first month. Bank Trade Alerts is an algorithm driven buy and sell alert service that sends all of your buy and sell signals directly via email and text message and only trades the ETF TQQ. As you can tell from the performance data, Bank Trade Alerts does well whether the market is a bull market or a bear market. So you don't have to worry about the market conditions, you simply just follow the alerts and beat the market every year. So if you're interested in claiming that Black Friday deal to get 67% off your first month, you can get all the details about bank trade alerts and how to join by clicking on the links below. All right, so jumping back over to SPY, you can see that we did have a high volume selling day with SPY going down 2.23%, and you can clearly see that was on increasing volume, and Friday was a shorter trading session, so we have to ask ourselves if that volume would have been even more if the trading session were longer. So by far, we need to be very cautious when we see high volume selling and we did slice through that critical support level, which was right around 466. You can also see with that bearish price action breaking through critical support that we also did lose the bull trend. So this is officially the time that you need to start getting more defensive because we don't know how drastic this sell off can become. You don't want to be caught holding the bag, finding out that you bought at the absolute top and you're going through a deep stock market correction and you have no cash to put to work at lower prices. So the good news for SPY is you can see the lower Bollinger Band is holding the price action higher because that is going to be a strong support level. However, these Bollinger Bands will continue to expand and eventually they will allow the price action to go lower. So the best possible scenario if you're stuck in a long position is to cover when you see this gap close right around 465. Remember, gaps typically get filled, and unless we're going through a deep stock market crash, we should very likely see that gap fill sooner rather than later. So one of the very likely scenarios is that we do come back down to the 50 EMA or the support trend line, bounce and go fill this gap, and if we're going into a stock market correction, that will be a lower high, we'll get rejected at that resistance level, and we'll continue to form a lower low. Remember, a downtrend or a correction is going to be lower highs and lower lows, and we're going to see a bear trend developing in the SPY ETF. So right now, this is a possible scenario, but we can't rule out the possibility that we are still on a macro level bull market and we're going to eventually go back into another bull cycle. So don't automatically assume that we have to go through a stock market correction if we hold up above the support level right around 456. So there's going to be a lot of price action you need to pay attention to and there's going to be plenty of noise. If I zoom out of here real quick and I tell you that news that we got on Friday that more than likely caused the stock market to start panic selling, did we have any of that news going back through the 2020 to 2021 bull market? If the answer is yes, and you can see the stock market still was able to go higher on that bad news, then don't necessarily expect this time is going to be any different. Without a doubt, that news that we got on Friday that did start to cause the stock market to panic sell is news that we have seen plenty of times in the last couple of years. So as you can tell in the last couple of years, we were still able to continue to climb higher in this bull market with the same exact news that we start to see on Friday. So don't get overly bearish just because there's bad news, because as I always tell you, news is just noise. It's okay to be aware of the news, but if you're ignoring price action and you're allowing that news to create a bias, you're still going to be on the wrong side of the trade. So an example of that is if we bounce off support and we start forming higher highs and higher lows and we start climbing higher and you're still trying to short this market and you're still bearish even though the price action is telling you to be bullish, then you're not trading the stock market objectively. So right now we have to objectively say that we did slice through critical support and we did lose the bull trend. So without a doubt, we need to be objectively a lot more cautious, even though we don't necessarily want to be bearish, we definitely don't want to be full bull and have no cash in this bull market. So while we're below this 20 simple moving average, which is right around SPY 466, and we did break down below 462, that's going to significantly increase the probability we come down to the 50 EMA at 456. So that by far is going to be your next very critical support level. And if we break below that critical support, you need to be extremely cautious because we have four gaps below that I told you would likely get filled in the next stock market correction. So if we break down below the 50 EMA, we're very likely going to see a full blown correction, which is anywhere between 10 to 15% pullback. That means we're going to very likely close the gap at 450, close the gap at 447, close the gap at 442, and possibly even close the gap at 436. 
there's plenty of support down in those zones and those gaps do get filled so it's just not a matter of if it's a matter of when and the stock market correction would be the best time for the bears to go down and close those gaps so don't forget to watch this gap above at 465 because if we fill that gap and start heading back lower that will be a lower high and that does mean we're going to be starting down into a downtrend so that's what I mean by following the price action. You're looking for another lower high, a rejection at resistance, and then the outlook of another potential lower low to start this bull market going back into a rollover situation where we could see that full-blown correction. So I'm not going to pretend to tell you we're definitely going into a correction as long as we're staying above this support trend line and holding above the 50 EMA. What's done is done, and if you were following price action, you knew to get a lot more defensive when SPY broke below 462, so hopefully you paid attention to that price action and were able to mitigate some of these losses. So there's going to be a lot of very important price action to pay attention to going into next week, so make sure you know these critical levels at SPY 456 and that critical resistance breakout level at 466. If we break out above 466, it looks like the bulls are going back to new all-time highs, and if we break down below 456, it looks like we're going to see that full-blown correction. Jumping over to the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we can also see that we were down today 1.9% in the NASDAQ 100 and we did go lower on significant volume. However, you can see the exception here is the triple Qs did not go lower on increasing volume, meaning that we did not see more volume on Friday than we did in the previous trading sessions. Now, don't forget, we can clearly count five waves up here on the triple Qs, so we're definitely due for this pullback. The question is, how deep is this pullback going to go? Now our support trend line is going to be right around 389 and we have a strong support level right around 388 and we do have our Bollinger Bands contracting so our lower Bollinger Band is still above our 50 EMA so we will still have support from the Bollinger Band right around 386. Our 50 EMA is now our critical support which is at 384 because we did break below the 20 simple moving average at 395. So the price action is telling us to get more cautious and we're very close to losing the full bull trend if we do get one more red day below 395. However, if we bounce off this support trend line right around 389 to 390, and we can break out back above about 396 to 397, that means this is likely the end of the pullback, and we could still go back up to that price target up there at 409. So your critical breakout level will be right around 395 to 397, and your critical breakdown level will be below 388 and right below 384. If we break below the 50 EMA, you will have to start looking at this gap below that won't fill until we get back down to 360. If we break below the 50 EMA, we could go through a full-blown correction and we could come down, fill this gap, and we could correct this full five-wave move. If we start breaking down even lower and we close down below 350, now we need to talk about a much, much deeper stock market correction and possibly even a bear market. But let's play it day by day and right now your most critical levels is right around 383 to 384 because if we break below those levels we're very likely coming down much much lower in the dow jones we were down 2.52 percent today and we definitely saw very high volume selling with the dow jones coming down here and closing the gap around 349 so we can go ahead and delete that gap and as you can tell we still do have one more gap to fill which is right around 344. So you can clearly see this in the Dow Jones where once you get below that 50 EMA, you will start go gap hunting and you will start to close these gaps below. Now the question is, will the Dow Jones continue to go lower and close the gap at 344? It does not look likely in the short term. We're way below the lower Bollinger Band, so I'm looking for a huge retracement of this sell-off and more than likely this was just an overreaction to the news. We have a huge gap above that won't fill until we get back up to about 356. And even though we did have the market close on Thursday, a lot of this gap is very likely due to an overreaction of panic selling. So if you see the Dow Jones closing below 349, we're very likely going to 344 next because that will close the gap and we will have strong support right around 344. If we break below 344, we're looking for a retest of the lows right around 339. However, watch this gap fill because if we can close this gap and stay above the 50 EMA, we could start back into another bull cycle. This could be a correction that's now coming to an end that did correct this five wave move which you can clearly see here in the Dow Jones that we went up in a five wave structure and now it looks like we're going down in a three wave structure. So the question is, is this going to turn into a major stock market correction or is this the end of the correction in the Dow Jones and we're going back into another bull cycle and going to attempt to see that Santa Claus rally. It's way too soon to know for sure and we do have the battle of the gap situation where we have a gap at 344 and a gap at 356 and we don't know which one is going to fill first however use the bollinger bands to your advantage and right now the bollinger bands are telling us that we need to fill the upward gap first and that would still be a lower high if we are going to a full-blown correction and we're still coming down in 344. so look for the possibility that we bounce up to 356 if we're going through a correction we'll get rejected there and we will come down to form another lower low and we will see the dow jones coming down to 344. 
So your critical resistance level is 355 and your critical support level at this point will be 349. In the Russell 2000, we had a massive sell-off today with the Russell 2000 going down 3.77% and closing this gap right around 222. So we can go ahead and delete that gap. You can see the Russell 2000 also opened a gap above and that gap fills right around 228.5. So you can go ahead and round that up to about 229. Now the Russell 2000 has a ton of support around this area where we did fill the gap because we're sitting on top of our support trend line and we're also sitting on top of our resistance trend line breakout. And as you know, once you break a resistance level, it does become support. So we see the Russell 2000 finding support from three different areas of confluence and we did see that support level holding up and we are well below the lower Bollinger Band. So the most likely scenario for the Russell 2000 is that we're going to bounce up to close this gap and that means we could close the gap as soon as a couple weeks from now. So the highest probability chance is that the Russell 2000 is going to close this gap right around 229 which will retest the 50 EMA as resistance. So the bulls need to break out back above 230 and start closing back above the 50 EMA because we are in jeopardy of getting the bear trend if we continue to trend lower and stay below that 50 EMA. You can see all these moving averages are turning into negatively slopes, so the bears are gaining momentum, and we're very close to a very critical support level right around 222. So watch that price action at 222 because if we start breaking below that level, that does mean we will very likely see the Russell 2000 seeing this false breakout look and going into a much deeper correction, even though we did get that macro level breakout from that sideways consolidation. So we need to follow the price action here so the critical support will be 222 and the critical resistance will be at 230. Watch that gap fill because if we fill that gap and continue to head lower, we could see another leg lower and we could see the Russell 2000 coming back down to about 215. Again, we don't know exactly which scenario is going to play out, so we need to know our critical levels and just watch the price action and plan accordingly. We can see that we sold off on huge volume today, so there's definitely plenty of panic selling going on which could be a great buying opportunity, but we don't want to ignore the fact that we could be seeing the stock market in the very early stages of a stock market correction. Don't forget too that the Russell 2000 is already about 8.7% down from the previous all-time high, so we already do see a full-blown correction in the Russell 2000. It's very likely leading the way lower like we see in the Dow Jones, which means we could see the Russell 2000 and the Dow Jones bottoming out first. So pay attention to this violent sector rotation because you will very likely see some of these sectors and indices breaking down, which could give us hints that the rest of the stock market is about to break down as well. On the ARK ETF, we were only down 0.6% today, and I say only because we did see ARK selling off very drastically and looking like a waterfall wave of sell-off before this day. So we saw the ARK ETF selling slowing down a little bit, and you could tell from the volume there was not a lot of selling in this ETF. We're holding that support level right around 107, and remember, if we break that level, we're very likely coming down to 99. So it looks like the RK ETF might be trying to see if it bottomed out very soon to hold the support level at 107 and we will need to get a breakout back above about 114 and a close back above about 119 to see that RK did reverse this bearish trend. We're very close to having the full bear trend once that 20 simple moving average crosses below the 50 EMA. So look for the possibility of another lower high and continue to see RK starting to sell off down towards that support at 99. The bullish scenario would be that we come up get rejected, form a higher low, and start marching up higher to eventually break out above 120 and 126. If we can break out above 120, we're looking a lot more bullish, and if we can get that confirmation breakout above 126, we could still see the RK ETF running into the 140s. So watch that critical support level at 107, and the critical resistance level is way up here at 119, unless we see more recent price action to start analyzing where we could see higher highs and higher lows, but we won't know we have that condition until we see more price action. All right, next up is the VIX, which was up over 54% today and did close above 28, which is extremely concerning for the bull market case. Remember, the VIX is a measurement of fear, and right now we see mass panic, which either means that the selling is way overdone and we're going to see a monster bounce from here, or the selling is just starting and we have a lot more downside coming. So it's way too soon to know for sure, but you can clearly see that the VIX did break out of this resistance trend line and did close way above 20 and way above 26. So by far, this is very concerning price action in the VIX that we do need to respect, but we can't rule out the possibility this is an overreaction of panic selling and we could see the VIX getting crushed from here. So right now, pay attention to see if the VIX can continue to close above 26 and definitely continue to close above 20. The longer the VIX stays above 20, the more likely we're going to see a full-blown stock market correction. So right now, it looks like you need to prepare for a full-blown stock market correction. We need to see more price action to know for sure that that's going to be the case. But if you're looking at the VIX, it's firing off a huge warning sign that we're going to see much lower prices until we see something changing in the VIX and it starts closing back below 26 
and back below 20. So this is starting to look like a black swan event in the VIX where we're going to see the VIX back into the 40s and 50s and maybe even 60s, but it's just too soon to say because we only have one data point right now with the VIX breaking out. We see false breakouts all the time, so just be cautious and be aware of this price action and be prepared to plan accordingly. On Bitcoin, we're currently up about 1.93% with Bitcoin trading right around 55,000 and we do see Bitcoin is holding above that critical level at 53,000. Remember that if Bitcoin breaks below 52,000, we're very likely going to see Bitcoin pausing the bull market and we could see a full-blown correction or a very prolonged period of sideways movement. So right now, we could start to use Bitcoin as a sentiment indicator since it's still trading over the weekend even though the stock market is not. And if we do see Bitcoin breaking below 52,000, that could mean that we're going to see the stock market go through a full-blown correction as well. However, if we see Bitcoin start to recover from here and get back above 60,000, that could be an early indication that the stock market is also going to rebound from the recent sell-off. There's no direct correlation here other than sentiment of the investors and seeing if it's a risk-on environment or a risk-off environment. If we're going into a risk-off environment, you're not going to see Bitcoin breaking out above 60,000. If we're going back into a risk on environment, you'll see Bitcoin likely doing that move first since it trades 24 seven and you'll see Bitcoin breaking out above 60,000. So watch that critical resistance on Bitcoin right around 59 to 60,000 and watch that critical support level down here right around 54 to 53,000. If Bitcoin breaks below 52,000, I expect to see the stock market going through a full blown correction. On Amazon, we were down just over 2% today and we're back down to that critical support level at the 20 sample moving average and we still do have the full bull trend. So right now you need to be very cautious because we are at critical support and if we continue to break down from here, we could see Amazon going to a full blown correction. So watch strong support at 3,500 and 3,452 and if we break below 3,452, we're very likely coming back down to 3,300. But right now, Amazon still has the full bull trend sitting on top of critical support. So I think this is a buying opportunity because you have great risk reward ratios. It's very likely if we bounce from here, we will see Amazon trying to break out, which means we need to go back up to 3760 and try to break above that level to see Amazon possibly starting to run into the 3800s and possibly even 4000. On Tesla stock, we were down just over 3% and it still looks like Tesla is forming this bull flag and wedging into this consolidation period. That could easily take us out to the middle of December before we get a decisive breakout and our breakout levels will be above about 1208 for the bullish breakout that could send us to that price target at 1400 or the bearish breakdown below about 1080 and we would need to see the confirmation breakdown below about $1,000 which could take us to close the gap at 909 and 843. But right now it looks like Tesla still has some time to eat off the clock so it should just continue to ping pong around and consolidate within this wedge so don't expect to see Tesla going much of anywhere. Your trading range on Tesla right now is between about 1070 all the way up to about 1180 and that's where I would expect to see Tesla remaining range bound until we get a decisive breakout of this wedge. On Apple stock, we were down 3.17% today and we still do have a very strong bull trend in Apple stock and we did come back down to the breakout level which was the previous all time high. So we're coming back down to a very critical support level at 157 and if we continue to sell off from here, we expect to see Apple coming back down to about 154 which is our 20 simple moving average in our previous support trend line. If Apple can bounce off of any of these support levels, and attempt to break out of the previous all time high, you're looking for price targets at 166 and 168 on a breakout above 162. However, if we break down below about 154 to 153, you could see Apple going through a full blown correction and we could see much lower prices that take Apple all the way back down into the 140s. So right now, I think you need to be bullish on Apple because it's in the full bull trend and still holding up above critical support. And as long as Apple is above critical support, holding on to the full bull trend, it does look likely that we could see a new all time high. On the financial sector, we were down 3.32% today and we're back below the 50 EMA in one swift trading session, even though we did miss the trading session on Thanksgiving. So there is a huge gap to fill right around $40 and it did look like the financial sector was sort of getting ready for a consolidation before a breakout to a new all time high. So right now, this is definitely a panic selling situation, which could be a great buying opportunity with price action well below the Bollinger Band and a huge gap to fill at $40. On the industrial sector, we were down 2.71% today and again, very similar as the financial sector. Way below the 50 EMA, way below the lower Bollinger Band and a huge gap to fill all the way up here about 105.7.
The healthcare sector was down 0.37% today, so not nearly as much as the other sectors and sitting right on top of the 50 EMA, so we could still see price action bouncing off the 50 EMA as support. The energy sector was down 4.02% today and did close just below the 50 EMA and has a huge gap to fill above at $57. So jumping back over the S&P 500, this is definitely time to be a lot more cautious and a lot more defensive. There is multiple possible scenarios and we don't know exactly which one is going to play out because we need to see a lot more price action. All that we know for sure is that we saw high volume selling and we did slice through our first critical support level and we're very close to our critical support level number two. So watch that 50 EMA, which is our second critical support, because if we break below that, we're very likely coming down to fill some of these gaps and we're more than likely going to see a full blown correction. However, stay objective because if we bounce off the 50 EMA as support and we start closing above these gaps and making higher highs and higher lows, you have to remain objective and you have to stay on the bull. So right now I could see this going in either direction. If we break below critical support, we could easily go through that full blown correction. But if we bounce off support, I could see us easily going back into the continuation of that bull rally and finishing out some new all time highs before the end of the year. So don't get overly bearish just because there's lots of noise. Zoom out and look at the whole bull market from 2020 to 2021 and realize that we had the same exact noise that entire bull market, yet we continued to defy gravity and make new all time highs. So by far being objective and following the price action and the trend is the best way to trade this market because the noise is just going to confuse you and it's going to bake in too many biases into your trading. So there is a ton of price action you'll need to be watching, but don't forget that I am here to help you and I do have bank trade alerts and the stocks channel discord. Bank trade alerts will send you all of your buy and sell alerts directly via email and text message and it only trades the TQQs so you'll never have to guess what to do. I'm currently running that Black Friday discount deal where you can get 67% off your first month so if you haven't tried bank trade alerts now could be the best time to do that. I also have the Stocks Channel Discord where I do intraday updates and analysis to help you navigate this market and stay on the right side of the trade and I will be bringing new trade ideas to you weekly. If you're interested in trying out bank trade alerts or joining the Stocks Channel Discord community, you can find out all of the details and the links on how to join in the description below. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.